What is going on folks? My name is Brendan and on this channel we talk about all things endurance sports. Whether that's triathlon, running, swimming, biking, ultra marathons, the, the list goes on and we talk about anything involving those sports. So that would mean things like gear, training tips, my training plan, how my training is going and we do that each and every day. So if that's something you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button because we have a lot of fun things in the pipeline. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about your first triathlon fueling strategy. When I signed up for my first half Ironman, there were two questions my friends had for me. Number one, where am I gonna go to the washroom? Didn't have a clue, honestly. I, I was just winging it at that point. I didn't know, I, I'll pee in my pants. I don't know what I'll do for number two, because it's a long day out there. You're gonna need to go number two. That's without a doubt. But number two, what are you gonna eat? How are you gonna fuel yourself for six, seven, eight, 10 plus hours if you're doing a full Ironman. How are you gonna feel yourself? And that was something that really caught me off guard. I didn't know. I figured I'll just eat whatever. I'll just eat on the cuff. No plan needed, right? Wrong. I did that and I failed. I didn't plan any salt intake. I didn't have any caffeine planned out. And that's something quite key for someone that's an avid caffeine drinker such as myself. Some may say I'm a coffee connoisseur. And would they be wrong? They would not be. They'd be 100% factual information right there. I'm a coffee connoisseur. So anyway, so I went to the drawing board after that first failure and I came up with a pretty solid fueling structure. And this is something that I've been using for the last few years now and it seems to be pretty rock solid. Each year I will make minor tweaks just depending on what I feel is gonna work best for me in a certain race, if it's a little bit longer, if I feel it's gonna be hotter, I'll adjust my fueling strategy accordingly. One thing I would recommend for all triathletes is to really play around with your fueling strategy. Not one person can give you what's gonna work 100% for you. They can just give you guidelines and something for you to base your own fueling strategy on. So that's what we're gonna do. So starting off with a swim, you're gonna to wanna to have breakfast beforehand. That's without a doubt but you should have your breakfast like a couple hours before the race start at least to make sure you get and digest it. Maybe if possible, go number two before the race so you don't need to get off your bike. That would be ideal. That's a whole other waste of time if you have to go to those gross porta potties. Just, no, I don't, want, I don't want that. So what I typically do is I'll eat breakfast, wait a couple hours before the race start, and probably about 20 to 30 minutes before the race starts, I'll have a gel. My go-to right now are these goo energy gels. I typically have one with caffeine before the swim start because I usually have one or two coffees in the morning, but because of the racing, I usually only get to have one. So I'll have one with a little bit of caffeine to give me that little bit of extra oomph. Now, I did used to use hammer gels and the difference between these is pretty much just the thickness. So goos are nice, like goopy, almost, um, almost frosting-like texture whereas hammer gels are more watery and the consistency is just a little bit better. So if you like more gooey, chewy stuff, goo is the way to go. If you have a little bit more sensitive stomach and you like things to be digested easily, definitely go for the hammer gels. That's, that's my recommendation, but there's so many gels on the market. You could, I can't name them all. I don't even know them all. So before the swim, I'll have one gel because obviously we're not gonna be fueling in that water. May be able to take on water but you want to avoid that as much as possible am i right because you can't fuel you need to fuel beforehand because you're going to get tired after that 30 40 minute mark of being in the water so you want to make sure that your muscle glycogen is topped up that's why you have these pretty much liquid sugar your, these gels are liquid sugar after the swim we are obviously going to go to transition and get on the bike but before i clip on my pedals or put on my helmet i have a banana I'll have a banana stored in my bike shoes that I'll have right before starting on that epic 90 to 180 kilometer bike ride for half or full Ironman. And I'll do that for a couple of reasons. One is the potassium because typically half Ironmans and those type of stuffs are held in a hotter climate, typically the summer or if they're at this time of year, February, they're in a Southern climate. So it's gonna be quite hot. So you wanna make sure that your salt stores or electrolyte stores rather, are all topped up. So I'll have a banana, gives me that little bit of carbohydrates, the potassium, and you know what? I, I'm just obsessed with bananas. So it gives me that little bit of an extra morale boost. And then once I'm on the bike, I typically have one to two gels per hour, as well as scratch electrolyte drink. Now I'm gonna scratch electrolyte drink right now, but noon active tablets were what I used last year and the year before, I believe. 
and they worked pretty well. The only difference with the Noon tablets is it doesn't have that little bit of extra calories where the Scratch has about 80 calories per scoop. So I'll load my bottles up with two scoops of electrolytes, follow it with two gels per hour, and we're pretty good right there. Now, I do like to have a little bit of salt food halfway through the bike ride. And the reason for that is just, I, I don't really like having only liquid and gels in my stomach. It, it's just, it gets really gross on the run. Once you start bouncing up and down, it's just, it's gross. So what I have for myself is a Lara bar, but there's tons of different options. Whatever solid food really works for you. And like I said, you need to play around with your fueling strategy before you start race season. It should really be part of your overall training plan. You need to make sure what you're feeling with on your training runs, rides, swims is what you'll be using on race day so you don't have any extra surprises of stomach discomfort and just make sure it works for you. So I'll have a Lara bar, probably 45k to 60k into the bike, let that digest and we're pretty good. But like I said, there's tons of options out there. People make their own rice cakes, some people have peanut butter sandwiches, just some sort of solid food is really beneficial so you don't have a bunch of slogging around in your stomach. So I'll continue that two gels and two uh, scoops of scratch per hour until we get off the bike and then we're into the run. When you're on the run, they have a lot of aid stations. So a lot of races I've been to, it's either every mile or every kilometer. It's, they're quite freaking. And at these aid stations, they typically have pretzels, oranges. I've even had pineapple, um, chips, coke it's like a convenience store just decide to open everything they have and lay it out there and let all these people doing a crazy endurance event have free reign at it it's it's pretty great i must tell you so what i'll do is i'll pack a couple of gels with me but i'll rely heavily on the aid stations now you should check the race website to see what they'll be store or stashing at each of the aid stations because they do give that information in the race about me section, I'm pretty sure. You'll have to check that for yourself, but Ironman events for sure, list what type of fueling they'll, they'll be supplying to you. So whether that be Gatorade or Red Bull or that type of stuff, they'll have that. And if that doesn't work for you, you need to be fuel or planning your fuel for the run. For me, I typically just know that they're gonna have something I'll be able to use. So I'll take a couple gels just in case with me. So I'll have, I've been using the goose. I will take a caffeine gel with me every time just because I like to have that little bit of extra boof. But once you get through the each aid stations, just eat every time and drink every time. That's very important. Um, people do take salt tablets when they're running, something I haven't tried and something I'm open to. What, what's your experience with them? Have you tried them and do they make a big difference? I'm, I'm not really sure. For the run, it's really simple. I eat what's in the aid stations, take a couple of caffeine gels with me just in case, and I drink a lot. <laughs> I'm drinking so much by that time because typically for me, once I'm on the run and I'm starting to hurt, it's six, sometimes almost seven hours out there. So you gotta make sure you're taking on the, the fuel and the water. If not, you will pass out. That's no doubt. You will pass out with the proper fueling and baby girl, we do not want that for you. We want to be prepared. And then once you get to the finish line, baby, <laughs> you are going to have a party. If you're doing an Ironman or a half Ironman, the finish line party is fantastic. They usually have lots of food. That was my quick fueling strategy for y'all. And there's two things I really want you to take away from this is don't skimp out on the salt. Salt gets a bad rap in our society today, but when you're exercising, you're expending all your salt stores. And if you don't replace them, it can wreak havoc on your system. You'll get cramps, muscle spasms, dizziness, nausea, all that type of stuff. So you need to make sure that you're supplying enough sodium to your body and just don't stop eating. All right, folks, this is gonna be it for tonight. I hope you all had a wonderful day. I'm gonna drink this tea and just, just chillax. All right, remember, seek discomfort, keep smiling, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.